Okay, so we just talked about how to build the ultimate dividend stock portfolio and all of the important metrics that are required to do so. But naturally that leaves most average Joe investors with the follow-up question of which dividend stocks should I pick? In this video, I'm gonna share with you an example portfolio picked with dividend stocks based on today's metrics. And I went ahead and back tested this specific portfolio for the past 10 years against common dividend ETFs as well as the S&P 500. Make sure to watch all the way to the end of the video because things didn't turn out like I expected. What's up you guys? Welcome back to the Average Joe Investor channel. This dividend stock spreadsheet that we're looking at in this video and the corresponding dividend stock portfolio spreadsheet are available by joining the Average Joe Investor Patreon community. If you want to learn more, check out the link down in the description below. Again, this spreadsheet includes all of the dividend stocks that have been raising their dividend for at least the past five consecutive years. And as we talked about in the previous video, there are certain dividend metrics that are important to scrutinize which dividend stocks make the most sense for your portfolio. In this video, we're looking at a custom portfolio of 15 dividend stocks. Here are the metrics by which I filtered it down. First off, to make sure I could include a 10 year history, I went ahead and only included dividend stocks with a streak of 10 plus years. From there, I went ahead and looked at revenue growth. I wanted to make sure that any dividend stock I chose had at least a one year, if not a three and five year positive revenue growth. As I mentioned in the previous video, the dividend growth rate is the most critical aspect of this. So I wanted to make sure the portfolio had an average over all the dividend stocks of 10 plus percent over the past one, three, five, and 10 years. Doesn't mean every stock had to be over 10%, but the average needed to be. So I went ahead and filtered the one, three, five, and 10 years by six plus percent. And then I also wanted to make sure that I only chose dividend stocks with a current yield of at least 2%. The target for the portfolio is gonna be between three to 4% plus. Now at this point, I was left with how many dividend stocks here? A total of uh, 81 different dividend stocks to choose from, and I chose 15. Here are the 15 that I chose. For communications, Nexstar Media Group, NXST. In consumer staples, Pepsi, PEP. In energy, Delic Logistics, DKL. In financials, I had one, two, three, four stocks here. Arbor Realty Trust, ABR. Regions Financial, RF. FSBW, FS Bank Corp, CIVB, Savista Bank Shares, in Healthcare, Amgen, AMGN, in Industrials, Trinity Industries, TRN, in Information Technology, both ADP or Automatic Data Processing and Microchip Technology Inc., MCHP, in Real Estate we had two of them, Mid-America Apartment and CubeSmart, MAA and CUBE, and then in Utilities, NEE, Next Era Energy, and New Jersey Resources Corporation, NJR. All of these dividend stocks had at least 11 consecutive years of raising their dividend. We had as high as 51 years for Pepsi and 49 years for ADP. Then we also had Next Era, which was an aristocrat at 29 years, and New Jersey Resources, a dividend champion at 29 years. You'll see all of these 15 stocks that we chose had revenue growth that was positive over the past one, three, and five years. Here are the dividend growth rates, one, three, five, and 10 years. The dividend yields right here. And I'm assuming, by the way, in this portfolio, equal weighting across all 15 stocks would be 6.67% percent each. You can see here are the portfolio averages. For the one-year growth rate, 17%, 15% on the three-year, 14% on the five-year, and 15% on the 10-year dividend growth rates. And the dividend yield currently, based on current dividend yields, 4.73%. So like I mentioned, I took this dividend stock portfolio and I backtested it for the past 10 years under the following assumptions. Starting from $0, investing $100 per month, every month, and then reinvesting all dividends along the way. And as you can see here, we're going to test this portfolio against three popular e dividend ETFs and the S&P 500. So here's the test. How did these 10 dividend stocks do in a custom dividend stock portfolio against other investment options? So first off, let's look at total dividend income over the entire 10 year period. Then we'll look at the income in year 10. Then we'll look at the individual balances. So by now you should know a lot about Moomoo. Moo. We've talked about the benefits of the platform, how you can get up to 15 free stocks worth between two and $2,000 by making a qualified deposit. The amazing offer right now on their Cash Suite program, which for a limited time only, Moomoo Moo is boosting their uninvested Cash Sweep interest rate for new users from an already competitive 5.1% APY up to 8.1% APY when you add the 3% APY coupon valid for three months after activation. Given all of these benefits, now may be the perfect time to move a portion of, or maybe even all of your assets 
over to Mumu. Mumu is running a limited time offer right now for assets transferred to their brokerage and you could receive up to $5,000 in cash rewards for transferring your portfolio. Don't miss out on all of these opportunities right now with Mumu. To learn more, check out the link down in the description below or in the pinned comment. Also, thanks to Mumu for sponsoring this video. So first off, looking at column G and H right here, this is the total dividend income if all of our money was just in this one stock versus our weighted income. Number one result here was Arbor Realty Trust, followed by Delic Logistics, CubeSmart, Regions Financial, and Mid-America Apartment Communities. Lowest income was Trinity, Civista, and Microchip Technology. All of this income comes together to make up this number right here. How much income was generated in this dividend portfolio? $3,829.21 over the entire period. Let's just compare this right now to these other opportunities. We looked at SCHD, VYM, and VIG, and the S&P 500. Did any of these other investment opportunities have more dividend income earned during this 10-year period? The answer is no. SCHD had 31.31, VYM had 27.05, VIG had 17.92, and then S&P 500 had 15.76. This is approximately what everyone thought would happen, the S&P 500 being last, VIG being second to last, but the fact that we beat SCHD and VYM by a pretty wide margin was a little bit surprising to me. Here were the results for last 10 years of income. Top result here was Arbor Realty Trust, followed by Delic Logistics, CubeSmart, Regions Financial, and Next Star Media Group. Total for this portfolio would have been 1572.90 in year 10 income, and that beat out the other four, SCHD, VYM, VIG, and the S&P 500. It wasn't even close. For holding balance, it would have been Arbor Realty Trust, Microchip, Next Star Media Group, FS Bancorp, and then Pepsi. Here's the weighted balance going into this factor here at 2288, then 2074, 1874, 1827, and then 1765. Lowest portfolio balance would have been Savista Bank shares down here at 1073. Okay, so in total for the dividend ETF portfolio we we created, that would be a total portfolio balance of $23,711.66. How does that compare against the S&P 500, SCHD, VYM, and VIG? Well, guess what? It's number one again. I did not expect this to happen. The S&P 500 was closest at $23,087.90, followed by SCHD at $21,853, followed by VIG at $21,816, and then lastly, VYM at $19,497. So not only did our dividend portfolio win based on income, it also won on portfolio balance, which I wasn't hoping for. Actually, I'm hoping that the portfolio balance would have stayed low to accumulate more shares. But the reality is this is what happened over the past 10 years. Here's a look at the graphed data for this custom stock portfolio compared to the other ETFs. You can see in green, we have our portfolio winning the majority of the time here during COVID. Everything got readjusted and adjusted downward here. And then from there, it was winning right here throughout the rest of the way, except for being very close to the S&P 500 when it comes to portfolio balance. Worst performer here based on balance was VYM. Here's a look at one of the each one of the dividend stocks in our custom ETF portfolio. And you can see that there was a wide variety of different results when it came to portfolio balance. Some performed really well, some performed not as well, but collectively the ETF performed well. Here's another look at the dividend stocks in the portfolio and how quickly the shares grew over time. In, in blue right here um, is Arbor Realty Trust. You can see that while Arbor Realty Trust is priced lower than everything else, it's also growing faster than everything else as well. The name of the game when it comes to dividend stock portfolios is accumulating shares. Again, the portfolio balance doesn't matter in the context of a dividend stock portfolio because we're interested in dividend income, which is directly correlated with how many shares you own. So this is just one example of a dividend stock portfolio you can create that has the potential to be better than dividend ETFs on the market and at times potentially the S&P 500. There's nothing wrong with buying a dividend ETF and holding that long term. It's definitely a lot easier. But the point of this is to say, hey, you can do better than dividend ETFs such as SCHD, VYM, and VIG. Hopefully you found some value in this video, guys. Make sure to leave your two cents down in the comments below. It's my goal to respond to as many comments as possible on the day I post a new video. That's all I got for you guys. Have a great rest of your day, and thanks for watching.